Hello there and welcome dear virtual space hero community. I hope you're doing fine this week and this Thursday. You have you already know because um well I sent out an email and I announced the topic of today's week also last Thursday. I'm super excited because we're going to talk again about gamification. So we already had last year a um, gamification expert on the show and Mosin Memon, we were talking about his tool, it's called Avive. And you remember we were also talking about gamification and how to use very simple Excel spreadsheets to encourage and engage your learners. Why do we talk about gamification? Because many of us have seen that from last year when we all moved to the virtual space, we were sort of struggling a little bit with keeping the attention of our learners. And we're not going to talk 100% about a learning setting because um, Valerie is an expert in learning design and facilitation and how to use gamification elements. But today we're going to talk a, a little bit about a slightly different topic. We're going to talk about how to use elements of gamification in a storytelling, uh, in, sorry, <laughs> in a strategy session. So storytelling was last last week. This week we're talking about gamification. And I'm super happy that we have here with us connecting from New Jersey, from the US, and I'm already opening the virtual doors to her, Valerie Olaine, and there she is. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. And, and, and we can talk about story too, because that's related to gamification, so that's okay. We can we can continue the, that's, that's I, I, I love, I loved seeing all the past episodes and like the little pieces that I was like, we can tie those all together, because a lot of it really is connected to one another. So. <laughs> Fantastic, Valerie. So that's what we're going to do, because last week, we spoke with Charles Louis de Mar about gamification. Uh, dear God, so about storytelling and fairy tales. And today we talk about gamification. Um, Valerie, it's fantastic having you with me here on the Virtual Space Hero LinkedIn Live Show. So to all of you out there use this chance and also let us know your question. Please use the comment feature in this live stream and um, let us know your questions, but also your, your thoughts and your experiences on how you use gamification. But Valerie, to start with, I would love to know, how did you get into the area, into the topic of gamification? Yeah, that that is that is an interesting path um, because you know it's not like when I was when I was in school it was something that you could choose it wasn't it didn't it didn't really exist that much uh, or in the current form so what I was doing was I was actually working in corporate training and more of a traditional uh, what people would think of as traditional training teaching people how to use PowerPoint and things like that and over time I I came from a very creative background before that I had been in the performing arts and had done things like that. So I always had this creative piece, but I also had the sort of geeky science piece that, that there were always kind of, how do I put these together? And what I started to find was that I just wasn't satisfied with what I was seeing in learning and development. It just, it was boring. Let's just be honest. It was boring um, and it was ineffective. It just wasn't working. People were coming to the workshops. We would teach them. They would go away. And then they would forget and they weren't, you know, they weren't getting any benefit or they weren't getting the full benefit of what we were trying to help them with. And so I went on my own sort of personal quest because some of my some of my colleagues at the time were not they were like, no, we're good. We're good where we are. <laughs> we know what we're doing and we're happy. And I was like, no, but but we have to we have to we have to do better. And so I went on this quest and I was like, what else is out there? And this was when social media was first starting. There was lots of exciting, um, you know, emerging technologies. There was a lot of things to sort of pick and choose from. But I kept kind of coming back um, to the game piece. And I kept seeing that, you know, there's something there. People, people keep playing. People keep playing. And it's not because you know, they fail and they come back. They um, try different games and they come back. And <clears throat> I got very intrigued by like, what was that? What, you know, and how could we, how could we leverage that? How could we make use of that in a different context, which is really the whole sort of heart of gamification. Um, <clears throat> it's how you meld, meld those pieces together. So, 
So I was just trying to make, I was trying to make better learning experiences. That was how I got into it. Mm -hmm. Do you still remember the first game that you used in a learning context? Do you remember that? Um, yeah, sort of, well, yeah, sort of, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, well, no, because it, it's an interesting question because I know, um, at least some of your audience really like research and they want to know what can they point to that says this is, you know, what this is. And one of the challenges I think of being in the gamification world is there's no good definition. So when people say, when was the first time you used gamification or when was the first time you did this? It's, it's kind of interesting because some of those definitions are so uh, nebulous that, uh, but I do remember I was teaching um, back back when I was teaching things like PowerPoint. Um, I had this was when you used to send people to training for like a week, like <laughs> like in the old very old days, um, and people felt like they were being punished. I'm being sent to training, like it was like not work. It was like a separate thing, and. So it was like day four or five of the training and we're all getting just a little fatigued with the whole process. You can see it, you can feel it with the, with the people in the room. And so when they came in the next morning or it might've been after lunch, I don't remember. Um, I just said, you know, we're going to do something. And I taped pieces of paper up on the wall with numbers and each of the, each of the, each of the pages had like a topic on the back and I said, you know, we just got to do something a little different. I just have to, we have to break this up. And so they came back in and the first thing that happened was they kind of lit up a little bit because it was unexpected. And that is, I think, such a beautiful moment. Um, you know, if you look at the, the, the brain science of it, one of the things that just lights the brain up is that novelty. And it's not mm. enough. It's not enough. It might be enough to spark the curiosity. It's not going to sustain it. It's not, it's, you still have to follow it up with something meaningful and you still have to have other things. But that moment I could see when they came back in, they're like, what happened? What, <laughs> what's going on? And they got curious, which was a good start because that was better than people just sitting in chairs, clicking mouse buttons. And so I was like, okay, so we, we started and I said, okay, well, somebody pick a number and, and we just kind of play and we played and, and, and that was the game. The game was kind of this random. Now, is that really a game? Eh, it's, you know, it kind of, <laughs> it was playful. It was playful at best. Um, but you know, little things like that can make a big difference. Um, but I'm not a big fan of just throwing something novel in to make it fun. Because that's, mm. that's where we get into trouble. Um, and when people come to me with gamification ideas or they say, oh, I need your help. I need, I need, I need to gamify this, whatever this is. And, I'm, you know, and I start to ask them some questions. And they're like, oh, well, you know, we just want to make it more fun. I'm like, mm. ooh, that's like, that's like the red flag. It's like, it's like, okay, there's something else cool. here. There's a problem here with the design or something there's there's some missing piece here because just making it fun is not the solution like there has to be a result that we're that we're trying to achieve and just making it more fun is not a learning goal it's not a business goal <laughs> it's, it doesn't fit into any of those um, so it might be something that helps it might um, you know it, it, fun is something that that can can be leveraged it's kind of like the curiosity moment it's like making something fun might make people more willing to try something and mm -hmm. there's there's like very limited research on fun and adults it's all about children uh mm -hmm. using fun to get children to want to learn things and do things in school and things like that but the little bit that's out there about fun with with adults that's what they find is is it may or may not really improve the outcome over other means of doing whatever it is but it does put people in a different sort of positive state where they're more willing. They're more willing mm -hmm. to engage with you. They're more willing to try it. Um, like, okay, I'll play along. You know, they're, they'll, they'll kind of, they'll kind of go along on the journey with you uh, a little more easily. So, so fun does have its place, but that can't be, that can't be why we're doing it, I think. So 
Exactly. I think that really connects and relates a lot to all my discussions that I was having with L&D experts in the past half year, in the past year already, that it always needs to connect to the learning goals. And also, whenever you start yeah. designing something, the design elements, they need to relate to the learning objectives, the learning goals that you set for the participants or that the participants set for themselves, however it worked beforehand. Um, but uh, I think there's an essential question. So when we talk about games, and that's exactly what you were saying, you were mentioning, well, maybe it was was only playful maybe it wasn't a game yet so what would you say is a game or what is gamification what does it mean for you in a business context what elements maybe would you say or do you try to cover or do you try to use when it comes to um, gamification in as in a business context yeah I mean I, I think and the answer the the sad answer is it depends um, I for me I have a much broader definition of gamification than some of my colleagues do. For me, if we're talking about a game, a game is is a is a distinct thing I can I can look at. It is separate. I can take it and it can exist on its own. We can play a game. It's a product. It's a thing. Gamification to me is the overall process. So it, it encompasses for me not just gamification being using game elements in non-game context, which is sort of this probably the most condensed definition that people use. But for me, it's, it's, it's a broader term. So it does encompass the entire spectrum from, is it more of a playful design? Am I, am I going to leverage that? Or am I going all the way over to the like full simulation, serious game um, piece of it? And for me, what connects it is, um, if you're just using a game in a business setting, learning setting, whatever, Generally, what happens is you may get some good results. You may, um, just like any other thing, you may or may not, depending on a lot of factors. <laughs> it's not that simple, but but the game itself generally needs to be part of a larger thing. So for me, the gamification structure may include a game. There may be a part of the whole process, and for that's the difference. The, the gamification is a process. So. If, if, if the part of the process is I'm going to use a game to teach this part or to engage an audience in this or to teach a um, or to get a, a customer to understand um, something about the business or whatever it is, that's fine. And so I, I, I'm very I'm very liberal in my definition of it in terms of it could encompass whatever is necessary to get us to the goal and create the experience that we need to in order for, for the audience. So I, I always tell people there's the four pieces. There's the goal, so it spells out game. So you have the goal, which if you don't know where you're going and you don't have the metric that you're trying to achieve, then why are we doing it? And you you really can't get there because you don't know where you're going. Um, the next piece, and people skip that piece or they don't spend enough time. And I appreciate when you said, um, that, you know, in your past guests, they've talked about the learner picking the goals because that right. is so important. You have to mm -hmm. look at it on all the levels. It's like, what is the organizational piece of it? Like, what is the big picture of what we're trying to achieve as a business? Then there's that, what is this thing right now that we're trying to gamify? Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the, there's the people that are going to be using it. And so you have to always identify the audience. So the A in game for me is audience. And that is mm -hmm. the other piece that people don't spend enough time on. And I spend a lot of time working with people on things like developing personas and, um, you know, looking at looking at motivation, but looking at it slightly differently than than a lot of people do. Um, I'm a big fan of self-determination theory and Edward DC saying that really we're asking the wrong questions about motivation. We ask, how can I motivate the customer to buy the product? How can I motivate the student to do their, you know, do the assignment? And that's not really the right question. And if we change how we, how we ask the question and position it more as, how do I create the right environment? How do I create mm -hmm. the environment mm -hmm. in which these types of people will be more likely 
to behave in a certain way. So it's all probabilities. It's not, and, and that's, that's part of the challenge of people want me to tell them when I run workshops, they want me to tell them, okay, if this is my goal and my audience is this type of person, you should use these five game mechanics and that's going to solve your problem. And it doesn't work that way because we're dealing with people <laughs> and it's not that it's not that simple so we can we can we can derive some good guesses i'll call them like that we can yeah. start with we can start with developing a persona or not a persona but multiple personas that would be relevant to that situation and this is why um this is one of the things that makes for me gamification that sort of space that's part art part science because I can build a beautiful gamified solution that works for this specific audience for this specific purpose in this specific environment and it's not going to work somewhere else. And so we can't just, it's not like puzzle pieces that you can just take and say, I'm going to move them and they're going to go over here and it's going to solve the problem. And unfortunately, people want a quick, you know, they want a, they want a quick fix for, for, the, for the thing. Um, so, I, you know, I, I encourage them to spend, spend a lot of time. And I say, not just know your audience, but yeah. respect them. Respect mm -hmm. them. Respect that they're adults, that, that they have you know, their own desires and, and want to do things the way they want to do them, <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 and build, build whatever the product or the service is for them, not mm -hmm. what I you think, want them to do. Let me just pick up on one thing. You were saying that they want quick fixes. Yes, we do know that. And I think therefore it's so important that we as designers, whether it is a learning design or it's a strategy workshop, we always focus on that aspect as well, that there is no quick fix. We need to really think thoroughly through the goals, the motivations about the audience, exactly all those things that you were mentioning. Um, you were mentioning, just let me recapitulate. Uh, recapitulate. Sure. Re, well, let me summarize. <laughs> we have the G for goal. We have the A for um, audience. The M, what's it for motivation? Now the M is, not, well, no, it could be. It, it's partially. The M for me is mechanics, but mm -hmm. not just game mechanics. What I want people to think about is that you're really like a mechanic. You are building something, whatever, whether it's a product, a service, whatever it is, you are building something that is going to help this audience achieve some goals. So how am I gonna put it together? And part of that is which game elements am I gonna use? If it's a learning situation, what, you know, what activities am I going to include? So you do have to sort of gather your inventory of all the pieces, and then you have to figure out how to put them together. Because again, it's, it's like a recipe. You know, you could have the same ingredients, but you could put them together in very different ways because you you need to serve a different audience or you know you're trying to get to a different end result um mm -hmm. so, so it's, it's it's really that's sort of that that you know the m i guess could be for mixing it's it's, it's that it's that part where you start to really put it together um mm -hmm. so that's the m and then the and e I would be let me just pick up on something here Rory. <laughs> um we have one comment there and just oh, yes. going back to the a of the audience because um, somebody was mentioning absolutely agree respect your audience as you were saying and i'd add trust um trust yes. them as well. oh, that yes. reminds me a lot about what cassie labori and me were talking about when it comes to trust that your audience that your participants are able to do it to manage the 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 the, the, the activities you ask them to do exactly yes and, and and let them try let them try and you know and sometimes and again this is contextual it depends on um you know whether i'm i'm trying to promote a service or i'm trying to teach someone something if it's in the learning space definitely we need to let them have that moment of struggle you need to let them try and fail and try it again i mean that's 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 the you know that's the beauty of it and that's why i always i was you know, I ask people, I know failure in, in certain contexts is so difficult for people to sort of embrace. And, you know, some of that is organizational, some of that is cultural, and there's a lot of factors. But really, that is one of, I think, one of the, the great lessons from games is just this notion of, you know, keep trying, 
and 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 you can do it again and you can do it again and uh, you know it's it's uh so yeah, it's it's uh, for me for me the trust trusting trusting the people because ultimately it's for them and it's about them. So yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. fantastic. We now also know who was the who, who <gasps> the comment came from. So Shopa, thank you. Oh, ah, hello, Shopa. I was not able to see you, but I also excited that you are here. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so Valerie, what is the last the fourth element? It's the E, right? Yes, the E is for experience. Um, because ultimately, this all, whatever it is, this thing, this process, service, whatever, it exists in some context. It has to, it has to work within, if we're talking about a business situation, it has to work within the corporate culture. Um, you know, it may be, I may design something that is wonderful and could solve the problem, but it just doesn't fit with their corporate culture. Um, so it's not going to be adopted. It's not going to be embraced in the same way. Um, and the whole experience thing also, you have to think about the sustainability of it. Do you have the structure to support this if it's something that is going to extend over a period of time? Because that's one of the things we always have to decide. Is this a, uh, are we designing something that's just for like a one-time event if it's if it's a compliance issue maybe we just have to get everyone to um you know complete some process or something or is this something that we're you know we're using it for more of a culture change or change management or something like that then that's going to be a longer term and we have to really think about what that means when we're designing it that's a very different situation Absolutely. Um, fantastic. So now we're going to get to the kernel of the question. So how can we use, because we sort of opened up the scene to understand better gamification and the context. And I love your four elements for gamification and that you also make them up on the word game. It's really fantastic. So as Maria is asking here, we're going to tackle now the question about how can we use um, gamific gamification elements in strategy workshops. So maybe Valerie, you could go into some of the examples um, that you or that you already have. Absolutely. So um, again, what what I do, and I, I set up the I set up the four letters because that is actually a big part of the structure of the strategy session that we would run through. Um, so it would be, and you know, these these can be done in part. They traditionally were in person, they it can be done virtually, they can be done in any format. But basically, we go through that process. So we, we, we create a situation. Um, now, sometimes the, the people I'm working with, they have a specific situation in mind. Sometimes they just want to understand the process. So we're gonna, we'll just do it as a generic sort of process sort of thing. So a couple of years ago, for example, I was I was working at an event in Montreal. And so I knew that in Montreal in the summers, they have a lot of music festivals. So we created basically a simulation. This was, it was basically um, creating a little simulation and putting people inside it and kind of letting them figure out how they would tackle the problem. So we started with that. We started with, here's the situation. You have been hired by um, MME entertainment to, uh, to help them to increase their ticket sales by 20% uh, next summer. And, you know, and so we, 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 we kind of wrote this story. So going back to the beginning when we talked about story, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. story is so powerful and is one of my favorite gamification elements to use because there's so many ways you can use story um, because story could be, um, having people create the story like we like we're going to do in this strategy session it could be that there's that there's a character um and and we create a scenario so that we have to help this character solve some problem sometimes that's mm -hmm. the storyline um and people will react very differently when you attach a character to it because now they feel some sense of ownership and responsibility. Um, that's one of the things that distinguishes a game, uh, like a video game, from a movie or a book. If you read the same book over and over, you may feel something for the characters, but it doesn't change. Nothing about the book changes. But in a game, the outcome can very much change based on your actions. And that mm. is a powerful, powerful thing to put people in in the situation. 
So that's what we do. So we create this world basically. And we say, okay, you've been hired and we're going to do this and we're going to break down just like we talked about. We're going to break down the goals and we're going to make sure like what's it look like and we're going to start some conversation. And we generally do this in teams. So now we also have, we can have a little bit of both collaboration and competition because mm -hmm. that's a whole other, that's a whole other piece of it that you always have to be careful with that you're matching that. In, in a good way because competition mm -hmm. is not always always, always a good choice that is exactly. not always a good choice yeah. um, but and what i see here let me pick up from what yeah. is saying i think it's Shilpa again so Shilpa will let us know <laughs> we'll, if it's, we'll you. Say it's her <laughs> <laughs> so she loves the idea of using the concept of a music festival as a simulation absolutely because you put it absolutely in the context of the people as well so fantastic thanks a lot for for yes, providing us you. with your comments Thank you. So yes, and and also I think part of what comes out of that discussion, because you know it's always fun for me to kind of go around and eavesdrop and listen to what they're talking about, and they that's one of the things they immediately get engaged. They immediately get engaged, as opposed to you know a meeting where okay this year we're going to uh, we've got to work on ticket sales and we've got yeah, you know, and it's there's no there's no context really there's not a there's no excitement about it now you've got some you've got you've got you've always got the competitive ones that are like our team's gonna win and and then you get the people who uh, are a little more quiet but now they they get to work in a small group so that works to their advantage and so they all start working but they 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 immediately start start picking out they're like oh but they said that you know, we need to increase the ticket sales by twenty percent, and there's like always pieces of the story. So I'll mm -hmm. give them like some basics. So do, do you do you give them the pieces of the story later on, so it creates more excitement or unexpected yes. elements coming in? Yeah, we sometimes we 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 we, and again, depending on the group, um, sometimes it's a matter of giving them different pieces as they go along. Sometimes it's giving them just a little bit of the story and letting each team build the world and they make the decisions about what they think you know they they think the goal should be or they think the um you know they, they come up with they they fill in the gaps they they, they start okay. to build the story so i've done it both ways and i can't say that one works better or worse than the other i think they're both they're both really really good options um so you know you, you let them go through that process and then you let them go through this process of okay now you have to hire some people or you have to bring in some people to train or whatever is appropriate for the storyline that we've that we've sort of the journey we've started um, and then they do the personas and again i give them just enough to get them started. I don't want to give them the blank piece of paper and just say, oh, here, create some personas. Um, I do have templates I give them later, but I get them started the first time because for many, uh, in many cases, it's their first time doing it. And so I want to give them a little bit of structure to work with. Um, but it's fascinating. That, that to me is always really fascinating because people will make all sorts of interesting assumptions. Mm -hmm. so you have this wonderful conversation um, about about you know well I think that this character um, he wouldn't be very good with technology because he's older and then somebody else will come along and go but wait a minute I think he probably really uses social media a lot because and you get these really rich robust conversations and again it starts to get them to stop thinking about themselves and think outwardly of who would be using this? Who are these people? Put names and faces to them so that um, so that they really start they they start doing that. So they're they're adding on to their story. So they're creating this whole this whole uh, this whole thing. Um, so then we move into uh, the next phase, and there's always again depending on the group and how long we have. Um, at various stages, I'll sometimes throw in some little real world events like, oh, one of your team members just got hired away by uh, one of the other teams. And so then that person just has to has to change groups. Mm -hmm. And and they're like, well, wait a minute. They're the ones who said, you know, they were the ones who had the idea. And so I'm like, well, but that's that's what happens in real <laughs> in the real world. You know, you're you start out planning a project and then 
somebody leaves the company or somebody gets transferred or I was like that happens so what are you going to do about it so then they have to kind of figure out how to regroup so so that's 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 the other piece is like there's sort of the basic structure we go through but then there's a, there's always these lovely little opportunities to uh, throw in uh, a little a little uh, a little extra um, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times a lot of times that's sort of uh, judgment based like how is it how how are the groups working if they're already kind of I can see they're they're having a little trouble um, either with the team dynamic or um, kind of getting into the process then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna overwhelm them by throwing in too many <laughs> too right, many right. that would be uh, that'd be cruel <laughs> Valerie, do you have another example? So there was one example. I really like that. So one of your team members needs to leave. You mix them up. And so they they might, one group might be in, in, in an advantage. The other group might be in a disadvantage, whatever happens there. Um, is there another example of such an element that you cre could create more gamification in a workshop? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they also, I mean, you can, you can, you can have those teams do all sorts of all sorts of separate games too. You can have you can sort of hide um, information in the different teams, and you can they have to go and like trade information, or they have to go. You can mm. turn it into a bartering system. You can in in most of those after we go through the whole process. Um, there's a there's a there's a period where I give them some cards with different topics to give them some ideas of how they might um, strategize the 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 structure of whatever it is. Um, then we do we do the sort of Shark Tank. You know, we do voting. Um, that's always very popular, getting people to to sort of tell their stories. But before we do that, if there's time, um, again finding ways it's it's always it's always interesting to find ways to get the the teams to start to cross communicate so it might be it might be that they have to go pitch to one of the other teams first and you know they get um you know they they, they sort of get their buy-in or they mm -hmm. get their feedback or they get i mean so some of these things are not like full-scale game and and but it's but it's again always is this going to help lead me to the result? And if the result is that at the end of the session, I want them to leave with a good, solid plan they can work with. They're not mm. going to solve the entire, they're not going to create the entire strategy plan in one session because you're going to have to iterate through it. And that's the other thing that, that people, you know, forget to do. They think it's just one linear process and yeah. it's never yeah. one linear process process it's really go back and, and 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 do that um or you know you know i have them you know with the with the with the personas um yeah, yeah that 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 the elements the elements to create engagement yeah definitely there's yeah there's I think that's really a good point that we need to think beyond the elements that you were mentioning now. And thanks a lot for this comment. It really is a good point for all of us to keep in mind, irrespective of whatever it is, such small elements can bring into learning, but yeah. also into business or strategy sessions, really an add on an engagement factor and interaction factor that is super relevant. Yeah, and it really can be great point. Thanks. Yeah, and it could be so simple. I mean, one of my favorites, and ironically, I didn't use it in a couple of webinars I did recently, and I got called out for it. People said, you didn't do, um, I usually use Easter eggs. I hide Easter eggs in my slide deck. So if, you, if you're in the middle of a strategy session and you were going through slides after slide after slide and you know people are not paying any attention, Attention after a while, I actually hide things in my slides, and then and you tell them beforehand. I so tell them who the knows the number of Easter eggs I tell them at some the point. Yeah, and it's often something as simple as, and I don't, I don't make it overly difficult because again, I don't want to detract from the point of whatever this topic is we're talking mm -hmm. about. But I might take like different letters like one letter on a slide and I might put a square around it or make it a different color or you know something like that so it's it's pretty obvious like oh I think that's that's a letter she's you know that's a clue um, and so I'll just I'll just create like a, a code word 
and I'll I was I'll about saying that. It. How lovely. So at the end it could be a code word. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. that could help yeah. them even for their team challenge or whatever it is. Exactly. Exactly. Super cool, Valerie. Great example. Let me ask you one question because I wanted to pick up on that anyways. So it is about, and you mentioned it already, it is about the competition element, collaboration versus competition in gamified settings. So as you were saying, not always competition really sort of supports the, the, the end learning goal. Um, what is your take on that? Collaboration versus competition? Again, what is my goal? It always goes back to that. What is my goal? Um, if what I'm trying to accomplish is um, that 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 I, I need to I need to build teamwork, or I'm trying to build community, um, then competition may be very counter to my goal. That may not be the right answer. Um, if, however, uh, I'm I'm working with salespeople who are naturally, most of them, hyper competitive. <laughs> a leaderboard, they, if, if you don't give them a leaderboard, they feel like they've like been, you know, <laughs> punished. done it wrong, yeah. <laughs> you know, they, feel, they feel really let down, like there's no leader, there has to be a leaderboard. So again, what's the goal, who's the audience, and, and, and how would that dynamic work? And so, and, and it's sometimes not, all or nothing. Like I said, you can put them in teams and have the teams compete against one another, and that creates both collaboration and competition. Um, you can offer uh, some 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 things that that appeal to those super competitive people to say, you know, here's these other things you can do uh, aside from whatever the the main thing is that that gives them that you know that fills their need for competition. Uh, so there's there's a number of ways to finesse it, and I think that's that's the point is just keep asking the questions to say if I choose this, if I put this in the product or in this in this in this program, like how is that going to benefit the people? How is that going to get me closer to the goal? And if it, if the answer is it doesn't, then it doesn't belong there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's it's really and so some of it is not about gamifying the end result so much as gamifying your mindset and your process and mm -hmm. being open to experimenting and trying the different things and iterating through it and you know going through that creative process of 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 thinking about it and so the end result may not always end up looking terribly gameful the end result if it doesn't require it it doesn't require it um, mm -hmm. How you got there uh, could be very playful and could have, um, you know, could use these elements. So that's the other thing for me that's that that's kind of fun. It's like you don't you don't have to be building a gamified thing to use ideas from gamification because really at the heart, gamification is this beautiful interdisciplinary space that brings together the creative problem solving and the behavioral sciences and the game design stuff. And it, it, it just mixes it all together. Mm. And what it has at its core is that it's about a person. It's about doing something to improve someone's condition in some way. Absolutely, absolutely. And Valerie, um, I'm so thankful because we got a fantastic last question because I was making up my mind. I want to ask this and that and this and that. And I have like four or five questions in my head because we're already coming to an end. But I'm, of course, picking up Shilpa's question there. <laughs> Shilpa, thank you so much. So question is, we're talking so much about gamification and I love the examples, those small bits and pieces that you were mentioning. I really love them a lot and particularly also the act challenge or the game challenge through your slides like finding out a code word or something and there is the last question that we're picking up what's the latest gamification exercise that really got you feeling excited to try out oh this is this is going i'm actually right now <laughs> i'm actually right now um creating a proofreading course i know that sounds terribly exciting um <laughs> <but> <laughs> 
<laughs> to make it even more exciting, I am very limited what tools I can use to create this course. And so I'm actually building an escape room that is based in Excel. Wow, I want to know how that will work. I mean, it's crazy, right? It's like, it's, it's, but it's, that's, that's the fun of it. It's like, what do I have? That's for me, that's one of the best games is always the, what do I have? What are the pieces I have? And how can I put them together in some new, interesting way? And again, not just for the sake of being novel, but that's a business reality. Most of us, most of the people I work with, they can't go out and buy every new bright, shiny, tool or you know they, they they don't have all of the resources necessarily uh to to build out these big beautiful gamification systems that many many of my friends you know work on and i love that it's just not the world i'm in and so i like i love finding those little things that you can leverage um, because those little changes just snowball into uh big results, like really big results. And that's why I always mm -hmm. tell people to start small. People people shy away a lot of times from using any type of gamification because they feel like they don't know enough or they don't have the resources for it. And I say, no, 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 just start small. Find one thing, like one meeting. Maybe, um, you know, maybe at the next meeting, instead of sending out the full agenda, maybe you only send out the first word of each bullet point. And they have to like, you have to like, they have to like fill it in. They have to participate mm -hmm. as they're going through the meeting. I mean, it can be something as simple as that. It's like, what is your goal? Well, if my goal is to get them to pay attention during the meeting or participate or whatever, giving them a space to do that, that may solve my problem. That may mm -hmm. be enough. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. On the other hand, I may want to, you know, build the next you know, Fortnite or World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> but Valerie, you cannot leave us here. So definitely there are two and more people super curious about how do you build an escape room with Axel. Give us a few hints, please. Well, I'm basically what I'm doing is um, I'm using Excel partially to generate some random number codes that that people will 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 be assigned to people um because i can't give everybody the same codes because one of the one of the restrictions will be that the managers will want proof that people didn't like one person didn't do it and give the answers to everybody <laughs> so there has to be it's sort of a a secure backdoor security sort of thing so part of it has to do with that some of it has to do with just using excel and and excel is a big part of some of these people's jobs so it's got sort of that double duty of they get a little bit of excel experience but in a playful way um, so in addition to the proofing, they're going to get a little bit of Excel stuff going too. Um, but you can put, you can put quizzes in Excel and then you can have, you can use like validation to, to tell if the answer is correct or not. Um, and so they have to put in the right code and have it validated to unlock the next, the next thing, um, or something like that. So they'll have to, uh, have the right code, which will be the password for the next file or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not finished, but that's kind of the structure it's kind of taking is there's a story um, about uh, an attorney who has gotten into trouble because he, he had so many errors in his brief that he gave to the judge and the judge was very upset. And so he put him on proofreading probation. And so <laughs> this is not for the attorneys. This, this course is for their assistance. Um, legal secretaries, uh, document specialists, that sort of thing. Um, so they now have to like refresh their proofreading knowledge and show that they have uh, these skills in order to help help the, uh, the character to get out of proofreading probation, basically. Fantastic. And you know what? I also believe, as Shilpa is also stating there, thank you so much, very creative. And you know, this is what I also, I totally need to um, underline how important it is that we are able and did we sort of unleash our own creativity as learning designers or strategy workshop designers, whatever, if we're limited to certain tools. And I think really also here, Thomas, thank you very much. He also loves the ideas. Um, thank you so much, um, Valerie, for sharing all your expertise. I, I really believe that 
um, as you were saying, and just coming back to what I discussed also with Cassie Labori and with Melanie from the Learning Gym, and Chilpa was also there, and we are designing sometimes learning journeys um, for countries, for example, where you cannot use certain tools, where you cannot use camera, where sometimes you cannot even use the audio function. So limiting journeys, learning experiences to a chat tool, therefore, might be super important to be creative in how you were designing, for example, now an escape room in an Excel. I just, just love the idea. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Really, really great insights, um, Valerie. I'm wishing you all the best, fingers crossed, for the finalization of the design of this Excel sheet. And I really hope um, that you're going to catch up when you have finished it so that I can have a look at that. I would love to see that, how it works. Sounds super exciting. <laughs> Valerie, it was a tremendous pleasure having you with us here on the Virtual Space Hero LinkedIn Live Show. Thanks so much again for sharing your expertise. You know that backstage I have prepared sort of a short, um, a small virtual cocktail, and I'm seeing you there in a bit, OK? Hi. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much for being with us, Valerie. Thanks a lot. Dear Virtual Space Heroes, thanks a lot for being with us in this Virtual Space Hero LinkedIn Live about gamification in a strategy workshop. I'm sure you took some really great examples here for the design of your next um, of your next strategy workshop or learning or facilitation or workshop, whatever you're designing. And don't miss next week's Virtual Space Hero LinkedIn Live. We are going to talk, oh, well, in this case, I am going to talk, we from Virtual Space Hero, the majestic we, um, I'm going to talk with Clark Quinn about how to facilitate innovation. And with that, I'm going to leave you here. I'm wishing you a wonderful evening. Don't forget to check out our web page. We have um, the whole virtual space your linkedin live calendar with a lineup until june already online so i hope that you have that in your calendars currently we are using thursdays at 6 p.m cet i hope that fits your schedule if you want to suggest somebody for this linkedin live show let me know on the web page you can also suggest somebody to be invited or suggest yourself if you want to share something extraordinary and memorable you are doing in the virtual space and with that I'm saying goodbye and ciao from Austria. Bye.